Okay, we're recording and I'll welcome everyone else that might see this one later. I'm Fred Davies with The Wholesome Life and the last time we did this my wife joined me and she said you can do a great job. I'm working on other things right now <laughs> uh, and I've added a little content since I think it's been three months ago since we first did this class just to try and give people an idea of how to uh, take care of themselves while the virus was running. And so let me share a screen and we'll run into the things that really do make a difference for us. And if I can get my screen share on top so I can fight it, find. All right, Susan, am I sharing just the screen that shows slides fight off any virus? It shows you and I and your screen. All right, and we're probably in the way. We'll find out how much we're in the way <laughs> uh, as we go. So we're going to talk about how to fight off any virus, strengthen the immune system, and strengthen the lungs in this one. And as I mentioned, I'm Fred Davies with The Wholesome Life, and our website is thewholesomelife.info. And I've already asked you while you're taking the class to see how you can do better next time. If you've got things, uh, you can mute or chime in when you want. I want to start with just the old saying that uh, we heard from Benjamin Franklin. He said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And applying this to COVID-19, an ounce of prevention, how might that truly make a difference? The prevention that we saw from the media really didn't work. It, it was masks and a whole host of other things that doesn't strengthen the immune system. And so that ounce of prevention that we could have known as a society really has been lost largely because we've lost our overall health. We've lost our knowledge of how plants work for the body. And we've also lost our knowledge of how all of our parts work together, heart, mind, body, and spirit, to increase our immune system. Our nutrition and so forth really makes a difference. And uh, it, it's a huge, huge difference on how it makes a difference. Gratitude makes a difference. Exercise makes a difference. Positive relationships make a difference. Spiritual practice makes a difference. Healthy stress management absolutely does make a difference. Some things that truly destroy our immune system without us even trying is genetically modified foods, antibiotic pharmaceuticals, chlorine and fluoride in our water, mercury in immunizations or in fluorescent lights, sugar, and even some emotions like anger and hate, like lack of forgiveness. Uh, a diet that is just one thing, can really, really make us uh, sick very quickly. We can clog up the bowel. We can have unneeded or excess vaccines and exposures to chemicals, and those all really damage the immune system very, very quickly. And one of the things that we know is germs don't make us sick. In fact, our gut has uh, beneficial germs in it by the millions, perhaps billions, and those actually make us well. So being a germophobic society probably has contributed to our susceptibility to being sick. Whereas if we just eat a little dirt and, and move along that way, we'd probably get along a lot better. The other thing that we know is antibiotics. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, work on bacteria, they don't work on a virus or a fungus, and they don't help us when we lack proper nutrition or building materials. So what does the immune system do? It actually does a lot of things before things even enter our body. If we think of our digestive tract as what it truly is outside of our body, our immune system is very much largely in our digestive tract. In fact, over 80% of our immune system is in the digestive tract and kills foreign particles before they ever enter our body. The 
protection we have in our own nasal system, our sinuses, also protects us from things before they enter our body. And that helps if we just stay properly hydrated and keep a good boundary on us. So how do we support the immune system? We can cleanse, bringing less garbage in, taking out the trash. Uh, I want to talk about Dr. Christopher's Immucom formula briefly. This um, was advertised on a couple of different websites that I'm uh, host. One of them is called Dr. Christopher's uh, Fan Club for his products. And so a couple of things I'm going to talk about is actually some of his products that I have used on clients for many years because they do work. And so hopefully that doesn't sound like an advertisement for Dr. Christopher's, but when something works, um, I like to know why it works and so forth. So Immucalm is a combination of just two plants. That's all, two, marshmallow and astragalus. Marshmallow is very calming, but astragalus, I want to take just a minute and focus on that one plant. Astragalus, recent um, research on astragalus shows that astragalus is one of the very few plants that increases the length of the telomeres that our cells, when they divide, a, a thing called telomere gets shorter every time it divides. And astragalus actually improves or increases the length of that telomere or stimulates it to stay healthy. And so I am one of those who, once I found that research and I did some muscle testing for my own body, I've been taking Immucalm or astragalus individually, separately, for several years now. And in my 60s, I actually feel healthier than I ever have before, just because I'm doing all the things right now after years of <laughs> learning and trying and, learn and trying to find out what works. Uh, Stragulus also is in the adaptogen class. I don't know how many of you have heard of adaptogens before. I'm going to switch out of SlideShare for just a minute if I can find that so that you can see this book, Adaptogen. And I'm going to see if I can. Can we stop your video so this jumps up? Mm, that didn't help much, did it? I was going to see if I can and jump my video up higher. But let me just run this. Adaptogens, herbs for strength, stamina, and stress relief. Uh, I love this book because adaptogens are an herb that actually builds our body's ability to have a much stronger immune uh, stress response. And so, with adaptogen class herbs, there's only 21 in this class. And I love this book because it gives a pretty good overview of adaptogens, but it gives our immune system, our stress ability, increases it by about 400%. So that's one of the things that makes such a huge difference when we've got a lot of stress on us. It's actually worth just looking for uh, how we can improve our our ability to handle that stress with something as simple as one of the adaptogen class plans. Let's talk about gut health for a minute. And bacteria, are they good or are they bad? Well, well I mentioned before, we've got millions of bacteria in our gut and they have, the, the latest science actually tells us there's about 5,000 different species or families of friendly bacteria in the gut. And those gut bacteria have individual jobs to do. So if we're missing part of those 5,000 families, those jobs actually are not being done. We can increase the friendly bacteria in our gut very rapidly and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But I wanna point out something I mentioned before, and that is that 80% of our immune capacity is actually in our gut. And those links to the articles here uh, 
you can just go looking for immune capacity in our gut and you'll find lots of articles that talk about how that part of us that we kind of don't recognize is really our first line of defense for our uh, immune system. Now I want to talk about prebiotics and probiotics. We've all heard of probiotics. They're heavily advertised. There's a lot of companies that make probiotics. And it's my personal opinion that we need, need to focus on prebiotics and not commercial probiotics. And let me just run the math with you really quickly and so that that makes sense. If there's 5,000 different families or species of, of uh, bacteria in our gut, and the highest number of species those probiotics have in them, is, it's often only one, Lactobacillus or something like that. The highest I've ever seen is in the 30s. 30 out of 5,000 isn't even one tenth of 1%. So it's worth using the prebiotics, the things pre means it, it creates a home for it. It creates a, a friendly place for it. So drinking lots more water, eating foods that have the uh, materials in them to help these little guys be healthy helps them increase in number very, very rapidly. With my clients, I tell them to take in prebiotic foods, more water, lots of fresh food, and lots of variety of food because each of these friendly bacteria actually needs to eat and break down different kinds of food. So if we focus on the food that feeds that bacteria, they will increase in number very rapidly. And in fact, some of my clients, when they come to me, I use muscle testing to find out how many species of bacteria are healthy in their gut. And usually within a month to a month and a half, they've increased that by 20 or 30% just by increasing the variety of food that they eat and increasing the amount of water and the freshness of the food they eat. There's a short list there, oatmeal, flax, chia seeds, uh, all of the legume families, onions, garlic, apples, asparagus, lots of our fruits and vegetables are actually prebiotic. Uh, I love soothing digestion formula, another Dr. Christopher formula, formula that has slippery elm and licorice root in it. And it creates a very wonderful prebiotic area for the friendly bacteria to grow in. Probiotic foods are better than commercial probiotics and fermented pickles, fermented sauerkraut, the refrigerator kinds, or you make them yourself, are wonderful foods because they bring in and replicate or repopulate those friendly bacteria in a fermented style. And those are perfect if you've already created a good environment, they can grow very, very quickly. Part of our immune system is the T killer cells. And I'm not gonna spend much time on this, but if we have a healthy immune system, these T, T killer cells actually engulf the unfriendly uh, cells, cancer cells, virus infected cells, and, and and unhealthy cells, and they'll engulf it and kill it and make it ready to haul out of the body. Uh, you can search for videos of T killer cells in action. Um, you can see the one YouTube, one that I've got there, and it's NTK8, capital X, small s, x, v, capital V, capital D, small i and o and that's actually a very good one it shows them engulfing them and, and eating them up so how do we have a healthy immune system we need to be clean kill the gut with prebiotics like slippery elm and fermented foods 
and then take some herbs to support the immune function. I want to talk about that cleansing a little bit more. Um, bad cells or, or garbage feeds the bad bacteria. And so the better we are at keeping ourselves clean with exercise, eating clean foods, drinking enough water, and, and just keeping a, a healthy and happy lifestyle, the better we are at having a healthy immune system. Good nutrition, according to uh, Linus Pauling, prevents 95% of all disease. And my experience is it makes a huge difference. Just eat a wide variety of fresh foods. We actually teach our clients how to determine what foods are right for their body right at this time of year. And so that talks about eating in season, but also eating what your body needs and not necessarily what somebody else's body needs uh, because we're each so different. Some prevention extras, if we're talking about Dr. Christopher's products, Kid Immune and Kitty Well are good to have on hand if you have children. Dr. Christopher's Super Garlic Immune Formula is wonderful to have on hand also. That formula has a long list of powerful, powerful antibiotics, antivirals, and antifungal plants in it. And it's just a good one-two punch to knock out any kind of virus with garlic, mullein, wormwood, lobelia, marshmallow, white oak bark, black walnut hull, uh, which is an antifungal, by the way, as is mullein and um, plantain, I believe. Anyway, skull cap, which also by the way, skullcap kills the herpes zoster or the herpes virucella virus where it hides in the spine. So you can get rid of those mouth sores taking skullcap. Gravel root, plantain, and olive vera gel. I just want to point out on this slide that garlic and ginger both share antiviral, antifungal, antibiotic and antibacterial properties. Uh, this comes from a, a spreadsheet that I built that has a couple of hundred different plants on. It's just filtered down to show which ones they have. Garlic has 33 different properties, so what a wonderful way to fight off a virus or anything like that. Also powerful fighters, in addition to ginger root and just grating off a quarter inch maybe, and pouring hot water over it to make a good ginger root tea. Red raspberry leaf tea, echinacea and golden sill, or echinacea alone, wonderful, wonderful fighters. I want to talk about antibiotics for just a moment. The two um, white boxes here are just website captures from Kaiser Permanente and from um, the Mayo Clinic which I thought this was on full screen. It is good. Um, let me go back up one slide. One slide. It just dropped out of the present mode. Sorry about that. Because I was hoping to get back a slide and back to full screen on this. All right. Um, those two quotes from Mayo Clinic and Kaiser Permanente make it very clear that taking antibiotics for a viral pneumonia is not a good idea. And that's from, from well-respected medical um, teams. So there are a bunch of plants that are antibiotic. I'm not going to go through those. You can make a quick note of them or take a screen capture if you like. I want to move on to the next slide, which shows the antiviral plants, because that's where I want to focus our time for this virus. You'll notice on here that the antivirals, there are quite a few of them that are also antibiotic. Uh, for example, burdock, calendula, echinacea root, garlic, ginger, licorice root, 
Mullen, peppermint, and sage are all antibiotic and antiviral. Uh, and I'll spend just a minute longer on those. And note here about these different uh, antivirals. Knowing muscle testing helps us know which ones are going to be effective in our own body. I actually use muscle testing to make sure I'm using the right antiviral plants to fight off the right things. And not everybody's body responds to the same plants and not every virus responds to all of those plants either. And so we actually muscle test each time to make sure that your body will fight off those plants properly. And so I wanted just to show really quickly on the next slide how many of those are also antifungal because some things, for example, um, a client very recently and a lot of my neighbors have had a fungal pneumonia, which antibiotics don't help at all, antivirals don't help at all, but the antifungal plants in just two or three days knocked out that viral pneumonia. And some of those that aren't crossovers from the others were more effective, like black walnut and pouty arco that you can see here uh, on the slide. So if you get a virus and fight it with plants, what happens? It actually kills it. Why? Because even uh, things that are resistant to, well, let's go back to the bacterial area. Bacteria that are, that are antibiotic resistant are not plant resistant. So you can still fight antibiotic resistant bacteria infections with antibacterial plants. And viruses, while there's not antivirus medication, viruses respond very quickly in my own experience to antiviral plants. You can usually knock it out within just a day or maybe two if you're willing to take high enough amounts of it. Sauerkraut, there's the recipe for sauerkraut. If you wanna grab a screen capture of that one. Um, my wife makes this, I love it. It's an absolutely tasty recipe and, and very, very good. Uh, it takes about seven days in a uh, crock or whatever you've got to ferment it in. We, she inherited a crock from her mother, a five gallon crock, and it works wonderful. It's a beautiful recipe. This recipe for pickles, refrigerator fermented pickles, is also wonderful. Love it. It's just an amazing recipe. Uh, we mentioned earlier in the slide slippery elm as a wonderful prebiotic. This slippery elm smoothie recipe is a great recipe for prebiotics um, and, and that area. I want to spend just a few minutes now on the lungs and what we need to do to support the lungs since this particular virus was especially hard on the lungs. There are a lot of single plants, and I'm going to spend just a few minutes on, on several of these that are wonderful for the lungs. The first one is an ephedra species plant. Uh, known in the West here as Brigham tea, uh, but it's ephedrine evidensis. There's a dozen different varieties of it. And that ephedra plant, Brigham tea in this area, actually opens up the bronchial tubes, makes it, it's an expectorant, it's a antihistamine, and does a wonderful job at cleaning out the lungs of the extra garbage. Astragalus, we mentioned earlier as a immune strengthener, it also is wonderful for the lungs. It helps the lungs to clear out. Polybasal or Tulsi is, a, is known for its properties to help women and, and balance out the hormones. It also is a lung rebuilder. Rhodiola, is in another adaptogen plant. 
that's wonderful for the lungs as astragalus is an adaption. And then mullen, I'm gonna spend a little time on the next slide in mullen and also spend a little bit more time on the next slides in the lung and bronchial formula. At respiratory relief syrup, those are two that might be good to have on hand, especially if you'd have weak lungs. Let's talk about mullen though. It is one of my favorite plants because it has so many wonderful properties. We actually um, transplanted some into our yard and I have several dozen plants that are in their second year. I don't have a picture of this, but you might recognize mullen in your area. It looks like this picture when it's in its first year and in its second year, it shoots up a, a thin stalk that it puts little yellow flowers on and that'll get about six foot high. One of the most amazing properties of mullen is that it is a pain reliever. And that pain relief is fast, it's better than any of the uh, other pharmaceutical pain relievers. We discovered that when we needed it to help relieve the pain from broken bones. And as a tea, or as a tincture, mullen absorbs very quickly and starts absorbing in the mouth actually, and the pain from broken bones or from structural damage is actually relieved within just a few minutes, maybe, um, maybe even 30 seconds. We'll notice a huge difference there. You'll notice also that mullen is antibiotic. It is antiseptic, antiviral, Mullen is an astringent, so it tightens up the tissue. It calms down tissue, it's a demulcent. Uh, it's also a diuretic, but a mild one. An emollient, which is also a tissue calming property. An expectorant, a nerve, uh, or nutritive, and a vulnerary or killing worms. The one I didn't list here is it is actually a lung rebuilder. Mullen is one of the strongest plants in rebuilding the lungs. And uh, one that isn't listed here is it makes the joints slippery again. So I use it to help clients that have scoliosis or bunions or anything that throws the joint out of alignment. Mullen helps the pain, but it also helps make that joint slippery so that it can slide back into place and realign itself. I have one woman client who had severe side-to-side -side scoliosis, quite an S-curve in her back that she'd had for 20 years. And in less than eight weeks, she had a straight back and mullen was one of the key components to that. Um, oh, the other property that is documented, it doesn't show here, is mullen helps broken bones realign to one another. And so that after they're set or if it's been shattered, broken bones will come back together. We've actually witnessed that, personally experienced it. So mullen, that is one I would always have on hand and especially for something like this that affects the lungs. The lung and bronchial formula with marshmallow root, mullen leaf, chickweed herb, pleurisy root, lungwort and lobelia is another wonderful one for the lungs as well as the respiratory relief syrup with nettle leaf mullen again. Notice that mullen is in all of these three formulas. Fresh garlic, fennel seed, chickweed again, and it's in a base of apple cider vinegar and vegetable glycerin. So what powerful, powerful methods to rebuild and help our body to stay strong in this kind of challenge. I wanna mention muscle testing again briefly. As I mentioned, I use muscle testing to know what is best in the approach for herbs, food, exercise, and so forth for you. And I'm going to share the next slide and then I'm going to, just so you've got the ability to know where I'm at, and then I'm gonna bounce back and um, just ask, so that if anyone else is watching, um, 
they can jump out at this point. I'll ask Susan if she wants to ask any questions. Um, and we'll stop sharing the screen so that you can ask whatever questions you'd like. <laughs> we went through it pretty fast, Susan. I get that. Uh, yeah, one question I do have. When you're muscle testing and you feel like you're getting a block and you can't get an answer, what do you do at that point? The first thing I check is to make sure that my yes and my no are clear to make sure my energy is flowing forward and not backward. Uh, and all I do for that is I test either my energy is flowing forward and I just do a, a, a direct one like that. And if I get a no, it's usually correct. The other one I test with is um, this is my yes, this is my no. I just check this is my yes, this is my no, make sure that that's flowing forward. Now, if that is flowing backward, um, it can be reset in less than a minute. Are you familiar with two or three ways to reset it? No, I'm not. Okay. Other people may need to know this and we'll just show it real quick. Um, I don't know if this will catch my top of my head, but uh, well, I'll show the, the sit down method first. You can just tap opposite shoulders five times on each side times five. So total of 50. And that crosses the energy in the body long enough, which is about a minute, to completely reset that and get it flowing forward again. The other thing that you can do very quickly is uh, known as a yoga pose, and you won't be able to see all of me, but you stand up, cross your feet, and then hold out your hands and cross over the one that's opposite to the foot that's forward and tuck it and hold that for about 60 seconds. And that also crosses the lower, crosses the upper, and puts the energy back to flowing forward again. Every time I've done that with a client, it takes 60 seconds, we're back to clean muscle testing again, no challenge at all. Um, hydration, you know, affects muscle testing significantly. Sometimes it's just a matter of telling them um, let's check your hydration level. And you can do that with muscle testing. Just check. I use the ladybug method. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've probably seen that one. Um, that I just check. Uh, uh, hydration is at least 60%, at least 80%, at least 90%, 95 and So right now I'm at 95%, but I still feel thirsty. <laughs> uh, and many of them... are down in the 60% range. And it doesn't work to try and do muscle testing if they're too high dehydrated. And, and just have them drink a couple of cups of water and then try again. Other blocks. If you get blocked and you're not making any progress in muscle testing, I always start with the four questions. Is it relationship? Is it mental, spiritual? Uh, relationship, emotional, mental, spiritual, physical. And, and I just ask through the four, and, and then you can go from wherever you find it there. Uh, okay. One of the things that I have always done with all clients that might sound a little odd, I start with a prayer with every session because it's their body, not mine. I need inspiration to know what to do with them because it's impossible to know from my experience what to do with them. All I can do is give them some ideas if we're not using inspiration on that one. Does that answer your question on on muscle testing? Getting it stuck? does help. And I would suggest always making sure that that prayer is in there because if I'm stuck on the muscle testing maybe I need some inspiration on that one and that's been true for for a very long time. I have another question.